Hello, Judith. You can start. Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Judith Pollack, and I'm speaking to you from Abbey College in Malvern. Uh, so we are a boarding school in the hills in the side of England. And uh, I was invited today to speak to all of you who are looking for opportunities to study abroad. Maybe that is for high school, maybe that is for university, but I wanted to chat to you a little bit about um, our school and why you might want to be coming to England for an education. So uh, welcome and thank you for, for joining us today and uh, thank you to VEF for having us. Uh, so there are many, many reasons why students choose to come over to the United Kingdom. Sometimes it is academic. It's got to do with the choice of course that you want to study. Sometimes it's just for experience. You want to visit another country. Sometimes it's for connection. You want to meet people from all over the world. We don't live anymore in a world where you will spend your whole life in one country. We live in a world where we interact with people from other countries all the time. And so being part of a global student community right from high school or foundation or university sets you up for success in a global world. So here at Abbey College, we are a traditional boarding school and we offer all sorts of things. We do academic years, that is IGCSEs. That is the same as your lower high school, where, wherever you are in the world, it is the same as secondary or early high school. A-levels, that is the same as senior high school or the last year or two of high school. Foundation courses are an amazing one-year course that can be for two reasons. So one, it might be that where your school in your country runs up until and the university of your choice, whether that is in Europe or England or Ireland or overseas somewhere, maybe there's a gap and you don't have the qualification to get straight into university. You can do a one-year foundation course. Or maybe you're looking to get into something like law or engineering or medicine or business. And these degrees can be very difficult to get into. And so if your marks are a good pass, but maybe weren't quite enough to get into the course you wanted, you can do a one year foundation course in any of those subjects to get you into the university of your choice. If you are not sure that you are ready to commit for a whole year abroad or two years or four years, then using all year courses, two weeks or one term or summer vacation courses are a really, really good way to figure out whether education in England is for you before you commit to a longer academic course. We find here at Abbey that most of our students are wanting to start with us in high school or foundation because they want to go to a university in this country. British universities hold good reputations in countries around the world. And so our, our students go on to up to 60 of the universities in the UK. Um, some examples of that are Durham, Lochborough, the University of Warwick. And I think it's really important when you're choosing somewhere to do secondary or foundation education that you ask the facility which universities they work with. It's a big investment to come all the way to do secondary course or a foundation course. And to do that and then discover you still might not get into the university you want that is very disappointing. So checking at the beginning, which universities a school works with, um, really is one of the things you should be ticking off. Okay, I'm gonna take a few steps backwards now. Um, if you're coming from, uh, and I'm aware that we have students here from Turkey, but also from other places around the globe. So I want to be general. Sometimes it's quite hard to know where you have to fit in. 
Do I go to secondary school, foundation, IGCSEs, IBs, A-levels? What does it look like? So this slide gives you the age comparison. If you are 14, 15, 16, 17 years old, then you will be doing two years of IGCSE. This is um, your high school education. If you have finished your middle or high in your country and you are 17, 18, 19 years old, then you will be doing senior or academic high, which is called A-levels here in England, sometimes also called an IB, which is an international baccalaureate. So an IB is something where you would study six subjects for those two years. A-levels, you study three subjects. So if you are really certain of what you want to study when you get to university, A-levels are a great option. You can really focus in on the three subjects you want to study and get a lot of value out of that and be very ready for university. If you are still wanting a broader choice, maybe you aren't so sure yet which course you want to study, then an international baccalaureate with six subjects can be a good idea. Then you do a little bit less in depth, but more subjects. It means you have more choice when you get further on. If you finished high school altogether, as I mentioned, either there might be a gap between your high school and a British university, or there might be a gap between the marks you got and the marks you need for a specific course then a foundation is a one-year fast-track course to get into university. <clears throat> so here at Abbey College, we do foundation courses in engineering, law, business, medicine, dentistry, architecture, any number of courses that you could ask us about. They also help because that year gives you a chance to intensively work on your English. So. As students coming to England from abroad, you might be coming with a varying array of English abilities. Some of you may be very, very fluent already. Some of you might be at that level where you've done school English, but you don't feel comfortable having a conversation. When you get to university, it's expected that you are very proficient and comfortable in English. So if that isn't the case yet, a foundation year, allows you the chance to really work on your English while you're studying the subjects you love. And you can see there in the block, I've just put in some of the subjects that we teach here at um, Abbey College. Um, you will find that both here at the college and at most British boarding schools, there are scholarships available for various reasons. So, the most obvious one is academic achievement. Any student who does really well in high school, and I hope this is an encouragement for you all to study really hard and do well in your final exams, you have the opportunity to apply for scholarships. Abbey College doesn't focus just on academics, so we also offer scholarships for people who have any particular talent. You might be really good at drama, you might be really good at a musical instrument. You might be, you might excel in a sport or have taken part in some kind of activity for your town or your country. We would also look at those things when we decide to award scholarships. And this can make your study in a foreign country more affordable. So this chap here, uh, Mustafa, was a lovely student that we had a year or so back who studied with us on scholarship. And um, I think you can read there that he had a really, really positive experience studying in England. Now going on to study business at the University of Coventry. <clears throat> so this is just to talk to you a little bit more about the foundation courses. Um, so, just to show you that the um, facilities here at the school are very broad, from art studios to science laboratories to design spaces to academic classroom spaces. And each of these courses has been put together 
to not just give you a great um, end of high school result, but a perfect route into studying at the university of your choice, whether that's here in England or back in your home country. So if you come to a, a British secondary school and you complete either your A-levels, your IB or a foundation course, you will find that your pathway into a university in your home country or around the world is something that is very smooth and also something that we help you with. So here in England, when you move from high school to university, you're asked to fill in something called a UCAS statement. That tells the universities all about you, your marks, your personality, your interests, what projects you've been involved in. So we as a school will help you to create that document that will be part of your application to whatever course or job or apprenticeship you choose to go on to after school. Uh, so here are just some of our international students who have joined us for the foundation courses, uh, which is senior secondary from around the world. We have students at Abbey College. We're very lucky to have a very broad global community of students from countries all over the world who join us every year. Um, I have the privilege of running the school social media account and often we will still be getting comments under pictures from students 10 years ago tagging friends that they've made in other countries, that they've traveled to go and see after they finished high school, that they've kept up professional relationships with as they enter the workforce. Uh, it really is something that you cannot put a value on to create a network of friends from around the world who have shared your high school experience. So of course, that is all of the academics, that is all about subjects and doing well and getting into great universities. But we also know that a lot of high school is just about having an amazing experience. So um, here at Abbey College, we are, always very keen to have you be active and part of all our um, activities. The school itself has a gym, a library, a cinema, pool tables, table tennis tables, common rooms. We do the normal sports, football, tennis, all of that kind of thing. Also some really fun ones like um, fencing, fighting with swords, uh, archery, using the bow and arrows, um, for our social life, we have barbecue evenings and fire pits and campfires, discos, parties. We try to make life on campus uh, really as um, all around balanced as possible. So your English is getting better, your academics are getting better, you have access to lots of activities and you have access to plenty of friends and social connection. So the final thing that I wanted to share, and again, um, I know that, that today there was really to speak to you about the things you want to consider when you're choosing a high school. So it's not just about our high school, but I want to share from our context that a lot of schools in England will also have connections to schools in other countries. For example, our college, Abbey, has a branch in Prague in the Czech Republic where we do a medical and dentistry foundation course. So that means you can either come and study this course with us in England or you can do it on the Charles University campus in Prague and then go on to universities around Europe. So choosing a high school in England doesn't just mean being able to go to a university in England. It also opens doors to European universities and to universities around the world and programs around the world. So this is a lot of writing on a slide. I'm not going to go through all of it. For those of you who are interested and you know already long term that you might be interested in something to do with the sciences, that is something you could ask us about and we would send all of this information through to you. So I'm just going to 
bump through a couple of these, a couple of them of more students who've been with us from Iran, the United Arab Emirates, from Sri Lanka, who have all come across and joined the Abbey College family and had an amazing experience. Um, right, so I wanted to just take the last few minutes to speak more generally about what you would be looking at when you look for a school overseas. And so here were a few points. I don't have them on a slide. So if you have a notebook, please write these down. Also, um, I'm hoping the guys at VAF can confirm I might be able to answer a few questions when I'm done. Uh, so the first thing that I want to say to every student around the world, it is very easy, it is very easy these days to make a website look really lovely. It is easy to make uh, a brochure look really lovely. That doesn't tell you what the school is like and what the school is about. Two things that you can do, first of all, is to build a relationship with a really good agent. Most agents in other countries will have made sure that they have either visited our school, they've come and spent time here, seen the campus, met us, or that they have met us at um, meetings and roadshows, etc. They will have vetted the school and will be able to say to you, yes, this school is really good. They are very good at sports. This is a school to go to if you are wanting a, that university. This is the right school if you are worried about academics. The agents know and understand the schools and can give you really good advice. The second thing you can do, either as well as having an agent or if you want to come directly to the schools, is ask to have face-to-face -face meetings. We love it when students ask to have a Zoom meeting with one of us, uh, whether that is the headmaster or the registrar or uh, me. I, I work with the international network of students. I love to have conversations with students to answer all of their questions, the big ones, the little ones, the weird ones. I don't mind how good or not good yet your English is. I don't mind what your questions are, but you will be able to get a better sense of the school if you have conversations with the people at that school. So that is my biggest piece of advice. Also, don't be afraid to ask for details of other students who've studied at the school so that you can contact them and find out about their experience, how the boarding houses were, how the accommodation was, what the teachers were like. So, for example, here at Abbey College, we're in a place called Malvern. It's a beautiful countryside environment. We've got hills, nature conservation, our campus is 70 acres. It's very, very beautiful. But if you thought that you were going to be in London or Manchester or a big city, you might come to Abbey and go, this isn't the kind of school I wanted to go to. So it's really important that you have spoken to other students and staff to understand, is it a city school? Is it a countryside school? If it's country, will they take me into the cities? We take our students on excursions every three weeks. We offer the students the bus to go to London, to Bristol, to Birmingham, to Stratford-upon-Avon. There's a question you can ask your school. Other than being in a classroom, what other things do you offer for me as a student? Once you've asked those questions, asked for photographs, asked for references from other students, and you can put all of that together and you feel you have a good feeling about the school, that is the time to do your application forms and move forward. Then the next step of that is going to be very paperwork heavy. The school is always here to help you with questions about your visas, about COVID travel restrictions, what uh, tests or vaccinations you might need here in England. We like people to be vaccinated, but we also accept students who aren't vaccinated if they have certain tests. The school can do all of that and, and the school should do all of that and help you with that. 
Which airport should I come to? Will somebody fetch me from there? Your school is here to be your home environment while you study in another country. So really, it's our job to make sure that all of those things that can be a little bit scary if it's your first time going to another country, it's our job to make sure all of that goes really very smoothly. So um, I guess I want to check in with my colleagues at VEF to say, is there the opportunity to answer any questions?
Hi everyone. Um, so uh, my name is Min, and I'm from uh, Avon Maitland District School Board, um, an uh, Ontario Public School Board in uh, Canada. So um, thank you, VEF, uh, very much for uh, hosting the event, and then uh, we have a chance to to see and to speak to you all about studying abroad in Canada. And um, so uh, just to start with, so why why usually that why people ask why Canada and um, these days, this year, Canada seems to be a very popular destination to all of international students uh, because we have obviously academic excellence that uh, is recognized by all of uh, people all over the world. And then uh, the second one would be affordable budget, where uh, uh, we have like a lot of uh, school system, like public school system and then private school system and uh, people have a lot of choices. The next one would be the uh, cultural diversity. Um, so we have a lot of people that come into Canada for studying, for immigration. So uh, there's a lot of people here with uh, tons of diversity, with culture. So um, obviously you, you kind of like feel the sense of uh, belonging here. And uh, the last one would be safe and peaceful in country. And um, according to kind of like um, uh, record, uh, it seemed that like Canada rank the first or the second uh, destination that you want to leave in, right? And um, uh, right now, it seemed that um, uh, Canada also offer a wide range of uh, ways to um, support international students. So they have uh, a lot of streams that support students with their visa process. So that helps a lot in, in, um, in applying to uh, Canada universities or colleges or um, public school or secondary school, for example. And uh, the next one would be um, uh, Avon Maitland. So let, let me introduce a little bit about our school board. So um, Avon Maitland District School Board. So we are located in a very uh, popular regions in, in Canada. So we bore Lake Huron in southwest, southwestern Ontario. So um, if you ever heard about Toronto, so it's only about 90 minutes from Toronto and um, Niagara too. So we, we kind of like very big area uh, from the west uh, with a lot of beautiful beaches and fabulous sunsets. So if you are interested in exploring um, the suburban area in Canada, so Avon Maitland would be the best choice for now. Moreover, um, so Avon Maitland School are also home to vibrant and diversified international programs, which is uh, we offer a lot of uh, um, programs to uh, support international students, especially the um, ESL, the International English as a second language, to support all of our international students. And uh, right now, uh, we have eight secondary schools. So uh, I'm going to talk more about it when it comes. Um, so uh, the the reason why that we, we usually uh, say that like Avon Maitland is the best choice is we have the affordable and safe community with uh, the urban amenities and in, in the rural flavor. So if um, people seems to have a good sense of uh, staying in a big city, let's say from Europe, so we have like big cities already. So uh, it's, it's a bad choice for you to visit Canada, to visit the rural area, and then to explore what is real Canadian, what is the uh, experience to live in the countryside area. Um, Although we are in the countryside area, but we offer inclusive learning environments and we obviously we honor diversity and we are equipped with the high tech classrooms because uh, we are a government funded uh, public school so that we have all of the technologies and then the facility that uh, that helps the teachers and the students to explore what they need to. Uh, the next one would be the advanced study opportunities in the specialist programs. 
we have a lot of specialist programs uh, that I'm going to uh, explore or tell you more um, during the presentation. And then uh, the next one would be uh, the specialized programs in culinary or cosmetology or technical designs. Um, like I said, we have eight secondary school and each school are special in some programs. So for example, if you are interested in culinary arts or uh, cosmetology, then there are some uh, school in, in our board that could help you a lot to explore that hands-on projects. And um, because we uh, also have plenty of places with cultural and historical and recreational opportunity to, to enjoy around the area, uh, we have like four seasons activity. So if you enjoy hiking or, or fishing or canoeing, that would be during like the spring and the fall or the summer. Uh, but in winter, we have snowmobiling and many more, um, plenty other activity that you can explore with us. Um, so I did talk about the locations. Um, so let's say if you if you take Toronto as a landmark, it's only about ninety minutes from from Toronto. So um, usually we 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 promote our Stratford area. So because Stratford is well known as a um, um, a festival city. So a lot of activity with arts, with theater, with uh, meteors uh, there during the year. So um, that would be an, an awesome place for you to visit. Uh, like I said, we have a secondary school. So we have uh, Stratford District Secondary School that are very famous with um, robotic and then arts and music. Um, but if you are, let's say, interested in hockey or volleyball, St. Mary District uh, school board would be school would be an, an awesome choice for you. Uh, we do provide our own uh, homestay service, so that is something that uh, we are kind of like different from other school board or other uh, uh, private school. So if you are, let's say, if you are registered to a private school, usually you're gonna stay in the resident. Um, but uh, if you are with us as a public school board, we offer our own homestay program where you live with the people that live in the community. So you, you have a, a good choice or a good sense of uh, exploring the kind of like the, the community living um, experience. And um, because we run our own homestay system, so we have five uh, coordinators that live in the community and then they understand the community, they understand the people in the community, they know which family that offer the best service or they know what kind of hobbies that family are offering or enjoying every year. And then when you apply to us, we would ask you, okay, what kind of like the best uh, hobby or what you're interested in. And we try to match those hobbies together so that you can explore the academic uh, school and then you can explore the um, extracurriculum activity when you are in the um, area. So that's, um, we have a lot of students that come to us and, and uh, enjoy the moment that they stay with us. Um, we do have a lot of programs to offer um, as a public school. So we obviously we offer the Ontario Secondary School Diploma or OSSD. Uh, for this diploma, we usually recommend the student that come to us for at least two years. So uh, you have enough time to uh, to choose the subject that you want, and then uh, you have enough time to plan for your. Um, after graduation, let's say if you want to go to Canadian university or institutions, then our guidance counselor will support you in the way of uh, choosing the, the best courses that can help you to go to those university. Um, and obviously the OSSD are recognized uh, all over the world too. So um, if you are not interested in Canadian university, or colleges, then you can apply to all over um, the world university, let's say the US or Australia or back to Europe for sure. We do have advanced placement um, in some school uh, for those who are really neat that um, um, 
to go to university in Canada, I, we would recommend you to take advanced placement because this is kind of like a foundation course. Um, it's, it's a project and foundations course that help you and give you uh, enough information or preparation for university uh, for the first year. Um, and like I said, we are very special in superior music and drama. So we have a lot of clubs and teams and, and athletes in sport too. So if you are into music and drama, uh, Stratford would be the best choice. Um, we also have special life program in culinary arts and technical design. So like I said in the previous one, um, we, we have a lot of choices for our students. Uh, if the students are coming for academic, we do have a lot of like academic mandatory courses to offer. Uh, but if you are coming for experience, we do have um, a lot of like hands-on projects or courses for you to explore as well. Uh, not many other public school will offer um, ESL support. We do offer very special ESL support for all of our international students. So when you register to us at the beginning, um, we will have you to take the test, like an entrance test, like an English test, right? So the test is only about 45 minutes to an hour. And after taking the test, so we would have the result. And then we know if you are um, in need of supporting uh, for your ESL, and then we will kind of like allocate a time for you beside those uh, courses that you take at home. So you you would have like ESL support during the time with us. Uh, that's very important because um, not many students that come to Canada with fluent English or or the ability to follow the classroom. So that uh, is kind of like a, a program that we offer and support our international students. Um, for now, we do have summer camp and exchange program for um, European uh, countries in general. So for uh, we do offer like full year, uh, let's say two semester, like 10 months program. And then we do offer five, five months programs as well. And we, we also have four months and three months so that you can kind of like spend your uh, Christmas break or or um, summer break from your country with us uh, in about three, four months. So you would understand more about how Canadian uh, education system works and uh, how uh, those um, kind of like specialized program is delivered in our school. So in a MBSB, um, so we usually prepare our students. So we say that like when you are coming to us, so you will be prepared for what, for future, for academic, for uh, all of uh, the opportunities to develop the skill. And then you will be well supported. So all of the staff at school that will support you, we have a garden counselor at school, we have your own homestay coordinators. So the one that if you have any uh, problem, just, just uh, kind of like text them or give them a call, they would be there to help you, to support you. Um, and, and obviously, uh, uh, the international team or the international student club that uh, we established for now for all of our students. So they would be there your, um, uh, for, your, for your support. So whenever you need anything, we have another international student that are here uh, or coming um, to group with you and then to share. Because uh, we believe that... Um, Every student have a different perspective and then different uh, goals to, to come to us. So um, we would kind of like support all of the students in the way that they want um, the best for them. And the last one would be you will be engaged. So you will be engaging in um, all of our activities. So uh, obviously that you will be in class to meet with all your friends to learn the academics. Um, knowledge and then you would be enjoying our uh, homestay activity as well. Um, so I'm going to share some videos of our uh, students that who are currently with us at the moment and um, they have some ideas that uh, that uh, I think that's going to be a, a great uh, experience for you.
So this is one of the uh, video. My experience with my host family is very good. Oh, sorry. And I'm very comfortable with them. They, uh, I spend a lot of the, a lot of time with them. Uh, the host family, I really like them. They're very nice. Very, they uh, make you feel at home, and I'm very happy with them. My host family is so nice, and I'm so good with them. So they are so nice um, and they help me with all my school problems with the classes. My family is, is very good. I like uh, all of them. And with the school I'm good. Like I have friends and the teachers are nice to me and all good. The teachers like make an effort to make you fit in and so far so well. And at school is all good. Uh, I'm living a good experience. In the school, the teachers are like so uh, asking you all the time if you're okay and if you need help. Our math teacher is so nice. Uh, they make sure we understand what we were doing and mm -hmm. uh, like trying to help us if we have any problem. Mm -hmm. Like they will come and try to fix it other solution or other way to do it. I'm loving the experience in Canada. My host family and uh, the school is <laughs> they're all so nice and so helpful. <laughs> so um just just in case that like you you didn't get the sounds of the video we gonna uh we can uh you can visit our booth and then uh, we do have those links over there for you to to explore. Um there's another video, but I think uh, it's going to be uh, next time uh, that um, I'm going to share. So um, we do also have a pathway with our uh, partnership to uh, Canadian institutions. Uh, one of the things that we call specialist high skills major. So if, if you are coming to Canada for at least two years, we would highly recommend that you join our uh, program, this specialist high school for a major. Because um, when you are coming, let's say for the, the degree, the diploma for the Ontario secondary diploma, you would have a chance to participate in, in this program to gain valuable experiences. Because um, it's kind of like a co-op uh, experience for you when you are in, in, in the secondary level, which is very um, special. So you would have the ability to uh, participate in these activity and then uh, to really take your project to work in the real life. So it is really support your education and, and your career planning process in the future if you have a uh, plan to, to visit the uh, um, or to go to university in Canada in general. And the next one would be to gain sector relevant certification. Uh, let's say if you are interested in customology, so uh, you like hair doing makeup something, so uh, you get hands-on project on it and then after the certain amount of uh, time you get the certification which is really helpful for you in the future if you want to do that job and uh, obviously you can apply this uh, uh, special project to get scholarship from many other colleges and university in canada um, and i believe in from from all over the world as well and the last one would be to engage with the industry professionals and uh, because you work with the professional, uh, you work with the teachers, the teacher going to get you to help you to work with uh, like in team and then to build the com connections with all of the professionals in the area on the field. So you, you get to know them and that that's helps you a lot in, in the future uh, for your career.
Uh, let's say we have King's University, King's uh, College in Western University, and then Huron uh, also College in, in Western University. So if you are interested in applying to Western University in Canada, and then this pathway will help you a lot. Uh, we do also have dual credit partnership with a lot of colleges in Canada. Uh, we do have uh, the program with Fanshawe College, very famous one, and then Lambton College and Canestoga as well. So if you are, let's say, intended to uh, come to Canada for secondary level and then stay for uh, the after graduation, let's say for colleges and university in Canada, uh, then we would have a lot of chances and opportunity to support you. Um, there's here's the schedule fee for the next year. Um, uh, like I said at the beginning, is this very affordable fee for one student coming for one year. So let's say if you are coming for one year, you're gonna stay for one year. The total one academic year for ten months would be about twenty five thousand five hundred. That is in Canadian dollar. Um, and if you are let's say coming for um, uh, for experience, let's say in, in, in three or four uh, months, that would be uh, about six, seven thousand only in Canadian. So that's very helpful uh, and affordable. If you kind of like want to try to see if you really like um, Canada or our system, uh, education system. And um, if you have any questions that... Uh, that really want to share with us, um, we would like to uh, you to visit our booth and then um, I'm going to spend more time with you. And um, of course, if you uh, if you want to have more information about our uh, school or even um, how to apply to you, our school board, then we, we can support you uh, with all of the information. Um, I leave my email and then um, our executive assistant email over there. So if you have any questions, just let it know. Um, again, uh, uh, if you are interested in secondary in, in uh, Ontario or in Canada, and then uh, we would love to have you here to explore and enjoy uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, experience with us. Thank you so much.
Hello, everyone. Welcome from Woodbury Forest School. I hope you're doing well. Um, this is a pretty interesting um, bit of technology here. I'm not uh, quite sure if it's running and working, but I'm, I'm hopeful that it is. Um, I'd like to share my screen with you so that I can um, present, but we will see if you're able. I'm not sure that you're able to see the screen at the moment. Um, See. Well, my hope is that you are able to see this um, and I will go through the presentation um, right now. Um, with a little luck, it works. Please, you can start. Can you see the screen? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, well, welcome to Woodbury Forest School. Um, we are a school of 400 students, um, but what we like to say is that we are one brotherhood. Um, that means that while our students come from many different countries and many different um, cities and states all around the United States and, and the world, um, we are one community and a very close-knit community. As you can see in the picture here, it gives you a nice little representation of what you would see at Woodbury. It looks like a college campus. Uh, we were established in 1889, and we are in central Virginia, as you can see the mountains in the back. We're about an hour and a half away from Washington, D.C., and about 35 minutes away from Charlottesville, where, uh, which is the home of University of Virginia. Let's see if this goes here. Woodbury. You know, the mission, the mission of our school is to develop our students with a high sense of honor and moral integrity and a deep respect for sound scholarship. Um, and that really is a big deal to us. So at the end of the day, and, and our students go to Ivy League schools, they accomplish a great deal. They're leaders in businesses and in, in business and in um, all areas of, of um, economic life. But um but at the end of the day, what we are most proud of is that our students are um, are good people, and they are young men of integrity, and they function in in this community and um, in society with honor and, and decency. We work really hard to develop our students into leaders. We train them um, to do that, and and really instill in them a sense of. Um, of need and urge to contribute to their communities and, and overall society. Um, we provide our students with the best preparation for college uh, entrance. Um, and we are, we are really pushing them to try and identify what their individual potential is um, and push them as far as they can go. And we do that in a, in a highly nurturing environment so that it is not overwhelming um, for them and it's not a stressful environment. We often call that a pressure cooker in the United States, and this is not a pressure cooker. This is an environment that is much more, works much more with the, the needs of young men, the, the developmental needs of young men um, as they move into adulthood. We are all boarding, and that makes a big difference for, uh, for international students in particular. Um, it's 100% boarding. We don't have any day students. Even the children of our faculty have to live on dorm um, when they come to school here. 97% of our faculty live on campus. And so there are houses all around the campus um, where families live and where our students are able to commune with them um, as members of their family. We, our students hail in this year from 31 states and the District of Columbia and 30 countries. Um, and, and so that provides an environment of, of a highly diverse uh, population. Our international student body is about 10% uh, of our population in any given year. And that um, and when you re have 30 countries represented in that group, you realize that we do not have students from many countries. Um, or sorry, we do not have students, too many students from any individual country. 
Um, that can be difficult for kids at the beginning, right, where they don't necessarily have people that they can speak their language with um, on campus. But it, what it does give them is provide them a really pure international experience. It also gets their English up and running much faster. And so they stop doing translation and they become more native speakers um, more effectively and, and at a quicker pace. Um, the boys here are... Um, educated largely free from distractions. Again, we have 1,200 acres um, and and we're one of the largest boarding schools in the country. And I don't mean that in terms of student population, but in terms of land. Um, and so our students have a lot of space um, to explore and to grow. We have um, three uh, miles of Rapidan River. We have uh, 13 miles of mountain biking trails and hiking trails. We have our own golf course, a lake, um, a pond, um, and many, many other things that, that students can partake in. We're all boys, uh, and that's a really important uh, important idea here. We, we are 100% all boys and 100% boarding, and so we offer a 24-hour all-encompassing program for our students. And we are intentionally focused on transforming those students into honorable and respectful young men. Um, one of the things that you will not see on our campus, for example, is boys walking around with their faces in their cell phones. While cell phones are allowed on campus, um, we have general rules about when and where they can use them. And so when you're walking around campus, boys are looking in your face, they're saying hello, they're greeting you, they're talking to you. Um, and that social part of growing up still exists on this campus. And we work really hard to make sure that boys value human relationships above digital relationships. Um, that picture there, is a really important picture. For us all around campus, we have fire pits um, with chairs around it. And this is what the boys do for fun and in the evenings, and they have a really good time. They'll do, make a fire, they'll grill things, they just they sit around and talk to each other. Um, and they're learning to relate to each other as human beings. We structure our environment to nurture each student's development, uh, emphasizing in particular confidence, resiliency, and in, uh, independence. Modern research shows at the collegiate level, which is where most of the research exists, um, that students, this idea that we used to have of grit, right? If students were just gritty, they would be, they would be stronger in environments. And that's not necessarily true. What is true about students is that the more they find connections, the, the more deeply they feel connected to their environment, to the adults, to the other, the other students around them, the higher the likelihood that they will be successful in, in that particular environment. And that's what we focus upon. And again, that's research that's borne out at the collegiate level. Um, so, and, and, and as a result, that's, you know, that's what we focus on more than anything is creating those connections um, with students and teaching them how to become independent learners and how to be, be uh, confident young men. There are a couple of statistics that most schools will, will share with you. Um, and it's important to dig deeper into those statistics to ask, um, how is it, how does that really manifest for the student, right? So one statistic that you'll often hear is the student to faculty ratio. And ours is a very low ratio, six to one. Um, but the reality is, is that a lot of schools can have very low student to faculty ratios, but the, but the class experience, is one of large classes um, with very little um, individualized learning and very little attention to the individual student. Um, at our school, uh, with a six to one student to fac faculty ratio and 400 students on our campus, our average class is about nine students. Um, that means that, and, and that's particularly in the lower years, the classes are a little bit bigger than they are in the upper years. So the deeper they get into topics, the smaller their classes become but the average class size is about nine, um, with the exception of a few types of classes that need um, a few more students. So theater classes, for example, some of the arts classes, um, some of the science classes that require partners will often uh, require a few more students in the, in the sections to be able to make it work. Um, but what you get at Woodbury is a very sort of individualized approach to a student's learning. 
our faculty, 60% hold um, advanced degrees. And that's really important because it's it, it doesn't just show that they've continued learning, which is part of part of the ethos here, right? Lifelong learning, but also that they are really passionate about their fields and they're excited and they you transmit that excitement for their individual discipline to the students. Um, I have a, an advisee, for example, who came here as a freshman last year, just a, a smart, bright boy swimmer. Um, he took a class with a teacher and, and they talked a lot about, um, you know, they he took a, a history class, but they talked a lot about local politics and, and what local politics look like in the United States. And as you can imagine, the last couple of years have been pretty, pretty um, contentious here but they talked specifically about the dynamics of local politics. And what they did over the summer was they corresponded with this teacher, four or five boys, um, and they decided to do an independent study as 10th graders with this, this teacher because they were so passionate about what, um, about what he was teaching them. And they're doing an independent study, um, again, on, on, and attending um, local um, political meetings here and uh, school board meetings. Um, and really learning about how um, democracy functions at, at sort of the grassroots level in, in local communities. Um, it's a pretty exciting class for them, and that's an opportunity that exists in schools with, um, with that level of individualized attention. We teach 39 college AP level courses, and that's really important to understand that we are not an AP school, meaning that we don't use the AP curriculum to govern our um, academic program. Rather, our classes are strong enough, are, are um, deep enough, and move fast enough that our students are able to take the AP exams after taking our classes and do well on them. The academic experience at Woodbury here is one that is um, that that is uh, emblematic of, of what the ideal education should be for students. Um, it's one that requires participation one that allows for um, extra support and extra help during the day when needed. So students do not feel ashamed or embarrassed to go ask their teachers for help if, if something that was presented during that day is not making sense. One that pushes them to be the best possible student that they can be, um, asking themselves, you know, and, and asking themselves to, to really be reflective of their skill set in, in what their um, their goals are and what their interests are, um, one that pushes them to their maximum potential. And it's done through hands-on learning, um, through small classes, through discussion-based um, courses, through writing across the curriculum. Um, our students, no matter what they do at, at Woodbury, are really strong academic students. In addition, um, we are one of the few schools that remain in the country that are liberal arts institutions. Now, in this period of time where, where students are pushed to become um, specialized very early on, they're pigeonholed really early um, in life and, and oftentimes are, are required to make um, decisions about what their interest areas are well um, when before they're really able to, to, um, to articulate what their interests are. Um, in addition, kids grow, right? They grow and they learn and they, they, they change their ideas about what their interests are. And, and the only way for a student be able to be able at the collegiate level to move from a political science discipline to a science discipline or a science discipline to a political science discipline, um, you know, from the humanities to the, to the hard sciences is really to have a strong basis in both areas. And so we require our students to do, um, to do well, both math and English and history, um, and the sciences along with the language and arts. We believe in the Renaissance man at the lower level, our ninth and 10th grade curriculum, um, is, is adapted for what boys need at that particular age. So they have uh, shorter classes and they see their teachers more often. At the, the junior and senior level, um, students need to have more time with their teachers because they're getting deeper into topics um, and deeper into curricula. And they have 90 minute blocks and see their teachers less often. Um, we also offer a distinction, a senior distinction opportunity, which allows students with um, developed in highly developed interests to be able to develop a, a research study um, at, in that senior year um, that is very specific to them and their interests and then and work on that for 
um, most of the year and then they, they present it to the school at the end. This can make a student stand out in the college process. Arts at Woodbury, we have 150 students involved in music ensembles, all sorts of music ensembles with 20 different course offerings in, in the studio arts uh, and along with five theater productions this year. In fact, we have a, a play going on right now um, and we have a huge number of students who are interested um, in participating in the arts. And again, because we are all boys, um, there is no shame um, and no embarrassment by uh, for a student to to be a really good artist and also an athlete and and also um, a, a strong academic student. Uh, there are no pressures pushing them towards one area versus the other. Athletics at Woodbury is an important part of life. We believe in um, in having a, a healthy body and a healthy mind here. Um, we offer 18 sports with 42 different teams, and we have a tradition of excellence um, in those sports. In fact, we play, uh, we've play. we been playing one football game for over 100 years, and it is very much ingrained in our culture here um, that, that sportsmanship and um, it is an important part of, of the Woodbury experience and a young man's experience, learning how to win graciously, learning how to lose with honor, um, all of those skills that are taught on the fields um, and, and in um, teams are really uh, also part of um, part of the the skill set that we teach here at Woodbury Forest. We do have some alternative sports for students who are not necessarily interested in team sports. We offer um, shooting. We offer uh, hiking. Um, or, sorry, we offer climbing, um, and we offer um, mountain biking as well. Um, these are the colleges and universities that students have attended in the last five years. As you can see, it's a really well-developed list that incorporates um, Ivy League institutions, large research-based institutions, and small elite colleges in the United States, um, including the U.S. Military um, Academy and the U.S. Naval Academy, which are two academies that are very difficult to, to be admitted to, not just on the academic level, but also um, requiring letters from um, from senators to be able to, to support an application, and we are consistently able to get students into those academies. Um, you'll also see that there are some international universities as well. Some of our students elect to go um, to go back to um, their countries or go to the UK for schooling, and, and we work and um, we work to make sure that that's a possibility for them as well. Um, you will see that there is a little bit of a, a thread throughout these schools. These schools tend to have um, math science uh, programs, strong math science programs, including engineering schools, which are very popular among our, our student body. Um, I pulled out the Chinese students um, in particular for the last five years, and not because you, you work with Chinese students, but rather um, because our, our international student body is so diversified, we don't have many kids from... Um, from any individual country, and and that makes it difficult to give you a sense of where where any where sort of you know um, uh, Western European or Eastern European or Latin American students might go. It's 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 not a a huge number of students in any given year. The Chinese population we admit about um, you know three students in any year, so we. At any given moment, we have anywhere between nine and 12 um, Chinese students, and that is the single largest international group. So statistically, it's a worthwhile group to take a look at. Um, and you can see that our that our international students do really well at the, in college um, in the college process and are attending outstanding institutions, including large research based state universities, um, Ivy League institutions, um, and uh, small uh, colleges, um, elite small colleges and universities, along again with international universities. Our application process is relatively simple and will be similar to what you would see at any um, at any uh, a boarding school in the United States. We allow for um, the standard application, um, which can allow a student to apply to multiple schools, or they can apply to the Woodbury um, through the Woodbury application. We require standardized test scores, either in SSAT and ISEE, a PSAT, SAT, pre-SAT, ACT. Um, any one of those are, are admissible. 
Um, and for international students, we also require either the Duolingo or a TOEFL. We require a graded English essay, writing sample from, from what they've written in their English class this year so that we can see not only how well they manipulate the language um, and they're able to use it, but also what the needs and what the questions are um, that the teachers are asking of the students, how well they're responding to those prompts right by the teachers. Um, and it gives us a little bit of insight into the English classes that they have. A student is able to go test optional, but when they go test optional, we ask for other materials, included grading, um, a graded math exam and uh, um, math syllabus. What is not really waivable for international students is the Duolingo or TOEFL. We need to have a language exam to be able to make sure that they can be successful at Woodbury because Woodbury Forest does not offer um, uh, uh, ESL. So we don't have any English support for international students. All students are required to take the standard curriculum. We require recommendations and transcripts. So English teacher and math teachers and the school counselor or the head of their current school. Um, we need to make sure that the student is doing well, not just academically, but also is a good community member. Um, but the single most important uh, aspect of our application process is the interview. And that is really important. We're looking for the right boys. We have the luxury to be able to, to decline students that we don't feel would be successful here. Um, and also the privilege to be able to search out and seek those students that we think um, could do well and could really enhance our community. And we, we determine that with the application materials in terms of academic success, but on in the interview um, to make sure that the student would be socially successful at the school. We are not a school that would, that in which an international student can exist and um, and just sit in their room and study, study, study. They have to be a participant in our, our school life. They have to want to take on the community and the culture here. Um, and that is a, a really special international student that, that we look for. Um, and, and so we determine that through the, the, um, the interview process. Affordability. We are lucky Woodbury Forest is um, is a really pretty impressive um, institution in terms of its endowment. We have a $500 million endowment. Um, that's, you know, that's half a billion dollars. That's a really, really strong endowment for any, for any boarding school and really for any college or university in the United States. Um, our, 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 and that really comes as a, as a function of the love and the care that our alumni base have for the school. Um, and, and it's evidenced every single year in our annual fund. Um, every year we go out to our community and we ask for um, donations to help the school continue to, to grow um, and be the best that it can be. Um, and we have 69% of our community participating in, in that annual fund. That is higher than any institution, either collegiate or secondary in the United States better than Harvard, better than Yale, better than Stanford. Our graduates are consistently happier with our education than theirs are with, with, um, with the education that's provided by them. As a result, we are able to offer about $7.3 million in tuition assistance each year, which gives aid to about 46% of our population. And our aid range, range from about 2,200 to about 62 two. 62 is full tuition. Um, when we offer 622 to students, we are also offering oftentimes health insurance, travel assistance, books, clothing, and, and a whole series of supports for them, including computers. Um, our philosophy is need-based, so we are, we are looking um, to, to identify what the actual financial strength is for a particular family, and we do that through tax returns and through financial statements. For international students, it's really dependent on what country they're from and what the the, the tax um, documentation is for that particular country. Our standard um, timeline um, is, I'll start with the standard timeline. The standard timeline is an application that is submitted by January 15th with all of the documents in and submitted at that time, including the um, the interview, um, and we take that in, and that's the first round, and we, we uh, admit students, we release our decisions on March 10th, and then families have to make a decision and decide to enroll or decide to decline by April 10th. 
Um, but for students who need to know earlier for a variety of different reasons, we offer an early decision timeline, which, uh, which requires all documentation to be submitted by November 15th. Then we let families know December 15th, and they have to make a decision by January 15th. So that is Woodbury Forest. Um, my name is Carla Vargas Kennedy, and I'm the Assistant Headmaster for Enrollment Management. Um, and I'm happy to answer questions about the school and about the program. And I hope that you um, take some time to um, to uh, get check us out on YouTube because we have a really, really wonderful um, YouTube channel um, where in which our um, our videos. Um, are um, are really exemplative of the program here. A lot of them are made. Um, there's actually one which is a day in the life of, so you can see what what it looks like on an average day for students. Um, and it's a it's a really great um, it's a really great program for kids um, to check out. I, it makes them you know feel more connected to the student body. Um, so if you have students who are interested, I would encourage them to check out YouTube um, and also to reach out to us. If you if you want to connect with a current international student, I'd be happy to have um, you do that as well.
Hello. Hello. Hi, everyone. Um, hi there. My name is Chanel. I am representing Urban International High School. I hope my sound and my audio is okay. Um, my role at Urban International High School, I am a student service director here. Uh, we are located in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Um, but our booth is located in Hallway 1. Um, so if any of you are interested in finding out more information about our booth, please feel free to stop by um, our virtual booth and we can provide you with more um, information that is geared toward your needs specifically. Um, but our seminar today, the topic is education and living conditions in Canada with Urban International High School. So I will be walking uh, through um, through, you guys, through with you guys our um, PowerPoint that we have, and it focuses on um, living in Canada, especially right now with the pandemic and how things are. Um, I will um, explain to you what our situation is uh, in Canada. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Um, just so you guys are, are aware, I am here with my colleague, Blair. Um, she's sitting right across from me, but she is uh, a student service, or sorry, she is a student counselor, and she's going to present to you at the last half of the seminar, she's going to walk through with you how to apply for Urban International High School, if that's something that you wish to pursue. Um, she's also going to be answering any of the questions that are in the chat box. I'm, I'm not able to see it, but um, she's able to answer them on my behalf. So without further ado, we will get started. I'm going to share my screen. Um, share screen. Okay. Okay. Are you able to see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Amazing. Oh. No? Oh. <laughs> Display name, save. Can you oh, see my yeah, PowerPoint? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think I'll have to look, leave it like this. So, um, if there's any of you that have just jumped on and joined the seminar, again, this is Urban International High School located in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. My name is Chanel. I am the Student Service Director here at Urban International School. With me is my colleague, Blair. She is a student counselor. She will be speaking with you the second half of the uh, seminar about the um, application process to Urban International School. This seminar focuses specifically on education and living conditions in Canada and with Urban International High School. I'm going to be showing you guys some videos. Uh, I'm going to give you some information on what it's like to be living in Canada during these times. Um, if you guys do have any questions, feel free to ask on the chat. Blair will answer, or we can save it. Um, we can save it for the the last five ten minutes um, of this seminar today, and I can answer on on video rather than chatting. Uh, so we are going to get started. I'm just going to jump on in. So student life in Canada during the pandemic. So right now Canada is headed in a very good direction uh, because the Ontario government is lifting capacity limits for organized events, specifically outdoors. 88% of people in Ontario have their first dose and 84% have uh, their second dose, so fully vaccinated. At Urban International High School, all our students and staff uh, are fully vaccinated. We have um, an online platform for school and as well as in person. Um, a lot of our students are in person, but just so everyone's aware, we all um, are vaccinated. Upon going into facilities that require you, uh, or you have the option really to take off your mask. So for an example, the restaurant, going to the gym, uh, or going to the movie theaters, you have to show proof of vaccination. So we call that a QR code where you just um, show them your QR code, and that just proves that you are fully vaccinated. And then you get the green light, and you're welcome into the facility. 
So why choose Canada? So Canada is recognized worldwide for its outstanding quality in education. So in Canada, a high school diploma is recognized by university and colleges worldwide, meaning that if you study uh, in, in uh, Ontario, Canada, if you study your high school diploma here with us, it's easy to transition um, into any uh, post-secondary education. It's, it's an easy transition to get accepted because, again, um, our education diploma is recognized worldwide. Canada also ranks number one in the world when it comes to quality of life. Um, and additionally, it is also one of the safest places in the world to be. Um, so that can reassure our parents. Uh, it is one of the safest place and also too, uh, with COVID and we are headed in a really good direction, it makes um, Canada more safe to be in. Also, when we back to COVID, um, when, when students come to school, the students that have chosen to study in school, um, they have their temperature checks in the morning, everyone is to wear a mask, and then they have to fill out um, a quick uh, questionnaire. Uh, five or six questions just to show that no one has COVID symptoms, so that we can all be safe uh, for everyone that comes to school. So here are some pictures of Toronto, Canada. Uh, right now we are in fall, but we are going to be transitioning into winter soon, so it's going to get quite chilly. I'm going to show you a video of some of our students right now. This is a very recent video that was made of some of our students that have um, explored Toronto right now during the pandemic. So I'm going to play that. Hopefully everyone can hear it.
Um, we don't have a third party that organizes the, the home space. We actually do that ourselves. So um, we speak to the families and we, we organize that um, with our students. So these are some photos of what a typical Canadian household looks like. Uh, and with homestay, it includes uh, your own bedroom, a shared bathroom, and three meals for the day. Okay. Uh, so as I was mentioning before, Urban International School, we have um, in-person learning as you can see in the photo here. And then we also offer online platforms for those that still want to remain in their home country who want to experience the Canadian, um, a Canadian education and they want to receive uh, a Canadian diploma. So we offer both options. However, when you choose to, uh, to do in-person or online learning, You've, you've locked into either one of those options. So for in-person, it is mandatory to come in person, and for online, it is mandatory to be online. A little bit of history of Urban International School. We were founded in 2009, and in 2017, um, we gained new management and a new an additional facility. Uh, and then in 2019, we still continue throughout the pandemic. Again, offering online and both in person. So what is Urban International High School? We are a private high school here in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, inspected by the Ministry of Education. We offer specialized academic programs that are geared specifically for students who wish to pursue higher level of education in Canada and abroad. UIS provides courses ranging from grade 9 to grade 12, and we have experienced teachers and educators that will teach these courses. Uh, this is just a brief overview. This is a chart of all the different departments that we have here at Urban International School. So we offer a big support system here. Um, so for students that have specific needs or need support in something very specific, uh, we have a department that will help uh, your student or your child um, with whatever they need. Talked about host families. Okay, in terms of the classroom environment, we have several different nationalities here. Um, something I love about Canada is that we are a melting a melting pot. So. Um, we are so diverse and also very diverse within um, our school here. So these are the different nationalities. Um, in terms of class size ratio, it is one teacher to a maximum of 25 students. Uh, we have two campuses. Both are in uh, Toronto. So we have a downtown campus. We call this our Eglinton campus. This is where I am today. Um, this campus is for grades 11 and 12, and it focuses on preparing these students for college and university. And we arrange the university visits at this location, as well as the IELTS test. So we are an official IELTS test center, and we arrange for students to take their tests at this location because it relieves a lot of stress, um, and it's in a familiar environment. So that's why we do it um, at our downtown campus. And then we have our North York campus. So our North York campus is in a, is in a quieter neighborhood in Toronto, um, but that campus is for grade 11, not grade 11, grade 9 to 10, and it focuses on ESL, so English as a Second Language. Um, upon entry into Urban International School, you are required to take an academic assessment um, or literacy assessment, and this will determine what ESL or what um, English course you will be enrolled into. So this is some photos of our downtown campus. We have um, like a media room, an art room, a library. Again, it focuses on grade 11 and 12. It's right downtown Toronto, so students are able to explore the city, um, and it's very convenient. You're able to get every, anywhere really quickly. Um, this is our North York campus for grades 9 and 10, focuses on ESL and located in a peaceful neighborhood. So what makes UIS different? 
Uh, well, I can confidently tell our parents that we, re we care first. We really go above and beyond for each and every student. We know them so well. Um, we have really good relationships with our students. Um, and we offer so much support to all of our students. Um, we have, here I will show you in our next slide, we have specialized counseling services uh, um, to provide students with support and guidance on any related topic um, that is listed here. So student life, development, planning life after high school, um, support services like emotional support, coping at school, social skills, questions about Canada. Um, our, my colleague Blair, who is sitting right across from me, this is uh, what Blair does on a day-to-day -day basis. She is supporting the students. In terms of student services, these, these um, are in addition to our counseling, our one-to-one -one counseling. So the catch-up service program. This program is for our online students. The students that want to stay home and they want to stay overseas, we arrange for you to meet one-on-one -on -one with your teacher um, to uh, have any academic related questions or you want clarification on something, you need help on an assignment, and you want to ask your teacher, that is what the catch-up service program is. Now that we also have a student adaptation service program, this is something I'm very passionate about. Um, it is specifically for our new students, new meaning to Canada or new meaning to Urban International School. So any of our new students that come to school, we will arrange for you to have um, a meeting with the Student Adaption Service and it is to support and to help smoothly transition our new students. Um, to answer any questions they have, to make sure that they are doing okay, that they have the support that they need, that they understand the environment that's around them. Okay, and in terms of personalized academic education streams, so this is uh, some pictures of um, the universities, the acceptance letters that we received um, from prestigious schools here in Ontario and also abroad or in Canada as well. Um, so 98% of our students receive acceptance letter from their desired university and colleges around the world. So the personalized academic education stream is, depending on the program the student wishes to pursue, we prepare a customized learning plan. So meaning that it's really like a roadmap. So you say, hey, I want to study, um, my, my focus after, call, after high school is to go to university to study business. So then we create that roadmap for you um, to help to make sure that you have all the requirements that you need in order to apply and receive that acceptance letter after um, your time at uh, high school at Urban International School. So these are some statistics. Uh, the admissions by university. So our most popular university here and the most prestigious school is the University of Toronto. And majority of our students get accepted there. This is university admissions. Uh, commerce is the most popular, but you can see that we have so many different um, uh, admission programs. In terms of credits, so in Ontario, need 30 credits in total to graduate high school. 18 compulsory credits and then 12 elective courses. At Urban International School, we have five um, five semesters. Each semester is 10 weeks long. Typically, a student will do two credits in a semester. Uh, additionally, you need 40 volunteer hours, and then uh, you also have to pass the OS, uh, the OSSL, oh sorry, pass the OSSLT for students that have studied in Canada for less than four years. Okay, so parents, this one is for you. Um, the Urban International School, we have partnered with Schoology and Power School. So um, Power School is a system that um, shows, Power School is a system that um, parents are able to see their students, their child's academic progress. So you're able to see their midterm and their final marks so that you're up to date 
on your child's progress throughout the school year. And Schoology is the system that we use for our online platform. Um, so students that are online, they will have access to Schoology, as well as our in-person students will have access to Schoology because their assignments and all of their lessons will also be on there. Clubs, so we have several different clubs at Urban International School. Um, it varies each year, depends on what the, that the student body is interested in that year. So this year specifically, we have business, computer science, media club, presentation club, and fitness club. And lastly, we do offer several scholarships to students who have high marks in their academic year and engage in the school community considered for a scholarship, um, as well as the enroll enrollment scholarship for new students. Um, so I'm going to show you a quick video of our graduation of 2019, I believe. So I'm going to go ahead and say that.
I'm going to pass it over to Blair. I'm just going to spin the camera around. All yours. Can we move it? Do you want to sit here? Okay. Hi, everyone, again. My name is Blair. I'm the student counselor here at UIS. Um, my job here is to support student adjust to life here at UIS in Canada. So now Chanel will take care of the chat. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to send us a message through the chat. Again, our portrait booth is located in hole number one. So let's get started. Uh, I'm sure after the presentation by Chanel, you are all wondering how to apply to UIS. I'm going to explain the procedure in how to apply for enrollment at UIS. So there are four each, uh, each main steps. Step one, come with and submit supplementary information to UIS. Step two, make payment and receive an official letter of acceptance. Step three, apply for a study permit to CIC. Step four, get ready to study on both. Canada. 
Students can apply for a credit permit once they have received a letter of acceptance, tuition receipt, and if you are minor, you need custodian declaration, which school will also offer the service. Um, there are things that we can provide, but there are also supporting documentation that the student will need to prepare, such as financial income, um, documentation of the family, and medical exam, and more based on the needs. Once everything is ready, your documentation and application is ready, you can submit the application to CIT online and finally will receive the visa. So before I wrap up the application process, I want to speak about the visa reduction, which can happen to anyone. Um, even when students have all the documentation and the application start prepared and ready, it can still happen. So when an application for student visa is rejected, the CIT will ask as to why they decide to deny the student. If the reason states anything about the purpose of the visit, UIC will provide an official supporting letter written by the academic director because their purpose of the visit is to study in Canada. If the reason states something like family ties in Canada, financial status, travel history, or any other reason, please let us know so UIC will work along with the student to find the alternate solution and help. That is everything. Now I will pass back to Chanel. She will speak about the Okay. If you can all see me. Okay. So we kind of wrapped it up a little bit early, uh, but just so you are all aware, right now we uh, we are offering um, we are offering to waive the five hundred dollar signature at university and college admission service. So what that is, is uh, when the student goes to apply for college and university, we help them through their step-by-step -step process of that application um, and any requirements that they need in order to um, apply for that specific program. So right now, that service is going to be completely waived. You will save $500 um, upon um, registering with Urban International School. Um, that wraps up everything for today. If you guys have any questions or stop screen sharing, if you have any questions or you want to come by our booth, please feel free to come on by. Um, and we will be waiting for, for we will be waiting to answer any of your questions. Um, but thank you all for coming and um, uh, listening to our presentation today. Uh, we hope to see you soon. Thank you.